Welcome back to another episode of Math with Dr. Math. And this is our test prep, Camila. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at one of these problems. And what I want to focus on is I want to focus on number 8, where it says simplify the expression and explain each step. So notice number 8 right here. So what I want to do, let me add another page. And I want to simplify. But not only do I want to simplify, but I want to know what I'm doing and what is that name of the property that's allowing us to do that. Oh. So, here is our problem. And I'm going to make it up here. I'm going to do 7 times R. You ready? Mm -hmm. Times 4. All right. So notice, 7 times r, I can't do much with this right here. 7 times r. But luckily for us, we have some pretty cool properties in math. And this is what the properties allow us to do. So we have this first property that allows us to do the following. So I'm going to move these parentheses around. And instead of grouping the 7 and the r, I'm going to group the R and the 4. So all I did is I moved these parentheses. These parentheses traveled. And what is the name of that property? Associative property of multiplication. Very good. So this is our associative property of multiplication. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right. And what if I wanted to, am I allowed to switch this 4 and the R? Exactly, and here's, here's the purpose. What I'm really trying to do is I'm trying to get this 4 closer to its pal, the 7. All right, so I'm allowed to switch these two. And what allows me to switch those two to change places, if you will? What property is that? Commutative property of multiplication. Man, someone is on fire! Commutative property of multiplication. Excellent multiplication. And now to reunite the 7 and the 4 as number and number. So what we're going to do is we're going to change these prop, excuse me, we're going to change the, the location of those parentheses, right? Now we're going to associate the 7 and the 4 and which property allows me to do that? Associated property. Associated property, she says? Of multiplication. Nice. A multiplication. Awesome. And now I can multiply 7 times 4, which leaves us with 28 times. times R. And we are done. And not only are we done, we've labeled every single thing that we have done in an organized fashion. Fantastico. Yep. All right. So let's go to our next problem here. All right, so our next problem is going to tell us to simplify, to simplify the expression. This property is brought to you by the letter G. All right, so what is the first thing we have to do here? First thing we have to do is multiply 4 times 3, which equals 12, plus and then times, well, wait. Yeah, you could absolutely do it. Here, take control. Let me move this closer to you. So if you're listening at home to Camila here, she's explained to me that we are going to distribute. Okay, so 4 times 3, which is 12. So 4 times 3 is 12. She said perfect. Keep going. And then you multiply 4 times 2, which is plus 8. So it would be... Um, which would be 12 plus 8R minus 11. Excellent. So what can we do now? So now what we can do is... Um, so now what we're going to do is use 
the uh, commutative property of addition. So what we're going to do is move the 8 and the 12 around. So it'd be 8r plus 12 minus 11. So then what you're going to do now is that you have the 12 and minus the 11. So you're going to subtract those. So 12 minus 11 is 1. And then your result's going to be 8r plus 1. And you, and you heard it here first, folks. So that is how we handle business. Let's take a look at another example. All right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to factor using the GCF, the greatest common factor. So what I heard Camila telling me is that we're going to take the 14 and we're going to break that guy up, right, into its factors. So what's one of the factors? Uh, two. Two, perfect. So I know I could do two times what will give me the 14? Two times seven, and of course we have the one times fourteen. So lucky for us, those are all the factors. Excellent. And now let's use twenty-eight. So we know, we know that two times what, Camila, will give us a twenty-eight. Fourteen. Great. Two times fourteen. And then we keep searching, right? We're trying to find more factors. So we ask ourselves, what else can we divide into 28? Seven. So I hear her say seven times? Four. Four. Excellent. So now we have found all the factors. So what we, we're going to look at is what's the largest number that, what's the largest factor that they have in common? Fourteen. Fourteen, she says. Excellent. So she says both of these list of factors have the largest number we see in common is that 14. So what we're going to do is you're going to use that 14 and you're going to factor it. And then you ask yourself, what do I have left? So you're asking yourself, 14 times what is going to give us the 28R? Two. Two, so let me write this down. Yes. Two. Two times 14. Two times 14. My Okay, so 2R, she's telling me. Good, because 14 times 2R gives me this 28R. Minus. Minus, good, she kept the sign. 14 times what is going to give us 14Y? 1. 1Y. One. One. And then? 1Y. 1y. Excellent. All right. And if you ever wanted to check your work, you just look. So let me get my highlighter here. 14 times 2. Excellent. It gives me the 28r. 14 times 1y gives me 14y. Fantastic. So now what we have done is we have factored using the greatest common factor. And we are done. Excellent. All right, folks, so welcome back to this next problem. So here we have the sum of 18 and 35. So I'm handing the pen over to Camila, and she's going to walk us through this problem. So technically, what you have to do first is that you have to read the problem slowly. The sum of 18 and 35, because if you go too fast... He, you're in trouble. Um, so the sum of is addition. You all know that. So it would be 18 plus 35. Great. So that's how you handle the problem where it's talking about the sum. So this right here is our algebraic expression. So now let's look at one that involves... A variable. All right, so here's our next problem. I'll let her, Camila take it away. So, like we said in the last problem, 
25 less than the number B is um, less than means subtraction, but 25 less than the number B means that B is a greater number than 25, so it would be B minus 25. All right, so here's the secret, folks. When it says 25 less than the number B, that key word is less than. So that's telling us that this 25 is going at the end, just like Camila did perfectly. So again, when it says a number less than, this number that it gives you goes at the end. Excellent.